And on that note, uh, just how does one uh, protect this treasure that we have? For more on this, Anish Andheria joins us, CEO of the Wildlife Conservation Trust. Thank you so much for your time, Ms. Andheria. All numbers tell a story. What do you make of these numbers? How far have we come? Where have we reached? I think uh, I, we can't categorize a number as good or bad. It is an upward trend. 200 is not a big number. Uh, we were 2967, and now we are 3167. It is 200. It's just 6.74, which is possible biologically. What is important to understand is that the Western Ghats, which is the most uh, we thought of Western Ghat as one of the most, as the best tiger habitat in India, but across the world. And that's where the tiger occupancy has gone down, which means that the number of cells and these cells that we talk of are maybe 10 kilometers by 10 kilometer cells. Is we are, so when you look at occupancy, it is large areas occupied by tigers. You see that in the Western Ghats, tiger populations, have actually gone down in non-protected areas, which means inside the tiger is either gone up slightly or it has remained stable. But the tigers outside these tiger reserves have gone down in the best habitat of for tigers in the world. So we have to be worried about that. The central Indian landscape, as I read the report, has actually sh shown an increase. And the increase has come, again, from just two states. I'm sure it is from Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. However, when you talk of Central Indian landscape, we also include the Central Indian and the Eastern Ghats. So when uh, these two habitats are also included, you realize that there are eight states there. Out of those eight states, those tiger numbers have actually come up, I think, only in Madhya Pradesh. We work in these states, so I know the ground reality is there. And so there again, the increase has is definitely there. But the contributors are just two and not eight states. And finally, uh, the Shivaliks, that is the flood up in the Uttarakhand region and, uh, and the Corbett and the Rajaji area, uh, that landscape has shown an increase of about 160 animals. Uh, it is also, as everybody knows, one of the most active tiger habitats. In fact, the highest density uh, of tigers is in Corbett, which is in uh, the Shivaliks in Uttarakhand. Uh, and there, I'm sure the tiger population has gone up in the neighboring areas as well, the Lansdowne area. Uh, there are several other non-protected areas in the Uttarakhand region where the animals have gone up. So I would say that the increase is muffled because of the reduction of tiger occupancy in the Western Ghats. Um, and I think so from Central India and Shivaliks, it is as expected. But otherwise, it is not that good for India. The Northeast especially and the Brahmaputra floodplains populations have really not done well. They have remained steady. But if you look at amount of forest that exists there, then the tiger densities are disproportionate, which means there should have been many more tigers. And so we have to actually look into uh, each and every landscape uh, in great detail to understand the reasons or the threat tigers are facing. Well, a lot of the, you know, the uh, Aam Aadmi, the layman doesn't have access to all of this. We've just got the big figure, the final numbers. But uh, so can you tell us then, we have, have we've uh, uh, gone up to over 50 tiger reserves in uh, over 70,000 square kilometers. How would you categorize uh, how everyone is doing? No, so no, no, the Western Ghats is a big area from Gujarat downwards to Kerala. There are a lot of protected areas, which means tiger reserves. Tiger reserves, tiger densities are stable or have slightly or marginally gone up. But there are interlinking corridors, and corridors are extremely important for long-term sustenance of tiger populations. So if the tiger population uh, uh, has to be sustained over a long period of time, then there has to be immigration and emigration of tigers and prey in between these parks. And so these corridors are where tiger densities have gone down, which may have an impact uh, later on. Because if you don't have any movement of tigers, then a local threat can easily wipe out the tiger population, even in a good habitat. 
So Western Ghat does have the best habitats, but they are all inside tiger reserves. Central India is not like that. Central India has tigers both inside and also in the corridor. Some of the best tiger corridors in India are in Central Indian landscape between Penj and uh, Kana tiger reserves, also to the south of Kana, which is in Balagat region, also to the east of Tadoba. So Central India, especially Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, have done exceedingly well as far as tiger numbers go. But other states, not so much. So I'll can I also categorize those tiger reserves because India has 53 tiger uh, and together we are looking at 75,700 square kilometers of uh, protected area which means all of 53 tiger reserves when you add them the area is about 75,700 square kilometers. Of that I would say uh, there are about seven states which have done well. All right so could you uh, expand on this? The different categories, which are the states that have done well and which ones you think need to catch up? Yes. So I would categorize them in, in, in three specific categories. The, the best states, the intermediate states and uh, poor uh, states with poor track record. There are, so we have tigers in 53 tigers um, and these tiger reserves are distributed amongst 18 states. Of this, uh, seven states, I would say Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Uttarakhand, Maharashtra, Assam and Tamil Nadu have done well. Uh, there the tiger population has gone up uh, in the last 10 years or it is stabilized. The intermediate states are actually counterintuitive. A lot of people think Rajasthan as one of the better tiger states. But actually it is because of Ranthambore that Rajasthan has a good name when it comes to tigers. But beyond the Ranthambore National Park, there is hardly any tiger population in, in Rajasthan. You know that tigers had got wiped out from Sariska has not yet bounced back like how Panna actually has bounced back after extinction. But Sariska remains where it is. So uh, Rajasthan, Kerala and West Bengal, I would say are intermediate. They need to improve. West Bengal lost all tigers from those that is Baksa. However, they have a stable tiger population in Sundarmans. That's why I give them intermediary status. The, the poor track record status and you can imagine so we have nine states which are either top or intermediate. Nine states have poor track record starting with Telangana, Chhattisgarh, Andhra Pradesh, Jharkhand, Odisha, Bihar, Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram and Uttar Pradesh. So 50% of all tiger states are actually uh, having a very poor and it is not really changed in the last four years. So when you have tiger numbers coming out year on year or after every four years, um, once we analyze why the numbers have gone up or down, the, num the amount of action that one needs to take at the state level is not actually going in. So we can keep putting these numbers out, but those states which were poor are still poor. They have not improved and I am sure that many more tiger reserves are going to lose all their tigers in the coming years. Um, and we know uh, state of forest report that the good quality forest is actually getting degraded into uh, a poor quality. And so the forest cover may go up, but the quality habitats have actually gone down progressively over the last 10 years. And this is uh, extremely worrisome. And this can have huge impacts on tiger populations in the years to come. This is the reality check we needed. We So basically, we need to have a stronger pool, wider DNA to protect our tigers. We're talking about biodiversity, having healthy immune systems for our wildcats, protecting them basically in the long term. So then, Dr. Andheria, how does one build from here? What are the biggest threats? Now, we have these over 3,000 tigers. What are the biggest threats to them in the next 25 years? So I would also now... Now, let us break it down into the threats because what are the problems? Why are certain states able to uh, manage those threats and why are uh, some states not? So I would say most if you I, if I have to rate the top five, six threats to the tigers, they're all anthropogenic, which means their roots are all, um, you know, basically around human beings. Mitigate, you need, uh, there is development that's happening in India. The linear infrastructure is being added uh, nearly 26 kilometers of four and six lane highways are coming. Canal systems are being built. Railway lines are being 
there are instead of one railway track uh, you are having two railway tracks now and because of which there is huge amount of impact on the uh, contiguity of the forest that means fragmentation is happening on the other hand man made forest fires are devastating outside tiger reserves so all those areas which are acting as corridors are actually burning sara once or twice a year and that is a death knell for prey species and if the prey species go down uh, tigers have nothing much to eat and therefore they will cattle and that gives rise to human wildlife conflict so the rate at which human wildlife conflict has grown uh, is phenomenal in many of these multiple use areas and that's where tigers are being poisoned i'm sure because if the tigers have disappeared from in uh, the uh, something is happening and i know from my experience in maharashtra and madhya pradesh which are doing exceedingly well in tiger conservation you lose huge number of cattle to tigers in the corridor and so those are big threats you also have firewood extraction people are still dependent on so there are you know a family uses about 10 kg of wood every single day and and there are nearly 300 million people dependent on india's protected areas 100 million people are dependent on india's 53 so you can imagine the pressure of fuel wood on these tiger reserves cattle grazing everybody knows india has the highest density of cattle and you have grazing which means they outcompete prey finally uh, hunting of prey a lot of uh, communities at least in the, some of these wherever the highways cut in those highways bring within miscreants and poaching of prey increases which means deer gaur all these tiger prey as a result the carrying capacity of the forest goes down and uh, conflict happens and then poached so uh, one very uh, scary a uh, hunting method that has emerged in the last uh, few years is of electrocution so farmers actually tap uh, overhead wires um, that is a 11 kv wire and that wire is actually wound all around their farms to protect their farms from pigs and nilgai and such other herbivores and i don't know how many tigers leopards jackals wolves are getting killed there in maharashtra and madhya pradesh definitely there is a huge rise in electrocution deaths in the past 5 uh, or 6 years so that's again a big threat so these are the threats that exist on our tiger population the the intensity of each will vary based on the landscape we are talking about for instance in northeast forests are good but prey is not there because their communities eat uh, wild prey um, there is huge amount of persecution for tigers so if in a uh, few years ago there was a tiger that- trade in nagaland and 4 500 people actually went and killed the tiger in a couple of days they burned the forest around the tiger and then speared it so that's social acceptance so there is i would say as a country we must be proud that the numbers have gone up we have 70 plus or 75% of all tigers on earth so we have done exceedingly well keeping in mind that we are 1.4 billion people however because we are the best tiger country we have to become better and it's not so difficult the solutions i within the country so these six states that i am talking about are implementing lot of things and other states have to learn from it and i think ntca in the years to come will have to enforce uh, these strategies in the poor states what is now these six states are becoming the heroes and they continue to be but the culture of protection the culture of managing uh, human wildlife conflict has really not spread across the country so i think ntc as a regulatory body has to focus more on the pan intermediate states are coming forward going forward and i think we have to really analyze why these states and and actually uh, as we speak the prime minister also announced mee results mee is management effective evaluation and in that uh, we know that uh, several of these tiger reserves that are not doing too well or the states are part of those poor tiger reserves so they know exactly what is wrong in those tiger reserves what we have to do in the next four years is to one by one conditions within those habitats is not easy but they have to start now otherwise we will have tiger states with zero tigers dr nishan dhira thank you for uh, being so candid with us so where india we have uh, 70% of the world's tiger so a huge burden uh, that we bear but we must shoulder this responsibility for all of us thank you for joining us